In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With you. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, of course, is the Feast of the Epiphany, and the Mass intention, as always, is for the p- people of the parish. Could I ask you in particular to pray for uh, Linda Douglas and uh, Barbara Slattery, uh, two parishioners who are battling COVID. Let's take a moment to call to mind the mercy of God and place ourselves at the beginning of this year, asking the Lord for his mercy and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds over the people. But upon you, the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations will walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise up your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart will throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Justice the King's Son. 
He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he roll from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. But the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him all. I want you to hear the gospel today, so just forgive me, I'm gonna, we're going to do something to set that up. <clears throat> Woohoo! Did you hear that? Huh? They, perfect. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, our Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler, 
who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that had been seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for your help, guys. I wanted to point out the main characters in today's gospel. And of course, it's the Feast of the Epiphany, and the attention, rightly so, is on the Magi, the wise men, and their bringing of their gifts, because it indicates the universal thrust, at least in Matthew's gospel, of the birth of Jesus. But on thinking about this gospel, what it struck me was, what struck me was, that at its heart is not only Jesus, but another character who can get kind of overlost on this feast. There are a lot of characters here. Herod, and on the basis of this excerpt from the Gospel of Matthew, you would think that it was an innocent enough question. But we know that his calling the Magi secretly is an indication of his covert intentions. And as tradition would hold, Herod was so threatened by the birth of Jesus and the threat to his power that we have that uh, terrible feast of the massacre of the innocents. And we know that the characters of the chief priests and the scribes, again, kind of innocently placed in this gospel. But as the story of Jesus unfolds, these men are the ones who begin to plot and scheme and feel threatened by the nature of Jesus' goodness and his miracles and his message and eventually lead to the consequence of the killing of this young baby as an adult. It struck me that there were men of power moving around all of this, and yet none of this would be possible without the yes in every aspect of her heart, her mind, and her body in this young woman, Mary. No Christmas and absolutely no epiphany. And I wanted to concentrate on that with you because I've been thinking how like the birth of Jesus our time is. Plotting, scheming, division, intrigue of powerful men. And, and where is it getting us? What kind of world is it a, a leaving for the future for our children? Here on the cusp of a new year, I want to ask myself and you, what is it that we need in order to bring about a better future, a more hopeful one, one into which a, a child can be born and grow up in safety and security? And what makes that possible? The machinations, the plotting, the scheming of powerful men? Or the open, loving heart of a simple woman? When I was a young seminarian, I had a professor who taught us church history. And he told a story that has stuck in my head most of my life. 
He was appointed as a newly ordained priest just back from Cambridge in England where he got his doctorate. And he was appointed as this handsome, bright, young priest to the cathedral in Sydney. It was very prestigious and a kind of blessing, I suppose, on his potential. And he said he remembered going once into the cathedral and then again and again as the days wore on and seeing at the shrine of Mary mostly a lot of elderly women. And he said at the back of his head, if he was completely honest, being this young, sophisticated, educated young priest, he kind of had scoffed at their piety. And he said over the time that he was there, he began to change his thinking and his feeling about it. And that slowly but surely, he began to see in it something that at first he had not seen. And it reminded me of a quote of the great German theologian Karl Rahner, and I, I wanted to quote it to you. Karl Rahner once pointed out, when you look at the apparitions of Mary that have been officially approved by the church, Fatima, Lourdes, etc., you will notice that she always appeared to the poor person, a child, an illiterate peasant, a group of children, someone without social standing. She never appears to a theologian in his study, to a pope, in his words, to a millionaire banker. She's always been the person to whom the poor look. Marian devotion, devotion to Mary, is a mysticism of the poor. Think about it. When you have nothing, where do you go? When you've run out of influence and resources and favors, when you can no longer barter or mortgage anything you have, where do you go? This past Christmas, as probably many of you did if you still have the privilege, have spoken to your mother or your children to you. One of my siblings set up, through her kindness, a Zoom call with my mother. And I know I've mentioned her a lot lately, but it's because I miss her like I can't even tell you. And the thought that at 88, that given this pandemic, forgive me, that I might never see her again, it's breaking my heart. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't do this at the early mass. But the thing that's so beautiful about it, that every time that I've spoken to my mother lately, she says, thank you for remembering me. I love you. It's such simple words. It's not building a building. It's not fighting a war. But they're the kind of words that, that change your world, that make salvation possible. Where, where do we go when we've got nowhere else to go? We go to the love of a parent, invariably a mother. Christine Matone, writing to the parents, our religious education person, writing to the parents, uh, this new year, picked up a quote from Pope Francis. It's a mother speaking to her children. I hear it in Christina's message, and I hear it in Papa Franz Francisco, and I wanted to quote it to you. The gospel repeats the image of Mary keeping all things in her heart. And here's what he says. Women typically take life to heart Women show us that the meaning of life is not found only in making things, but in taking things to heart. Only those who see with the heart see things properly, because they know how to look. They know how to look into each person. 
What do we need this coming new year? Some of you have the tradition of holding resolutions for a new year. I hope you've got ones around diet and exercise and being productive with your time. But I want to ask you to think about a different kind of resolution. What is it that our world needs? Does it need more plotting, scheming, conniving, secret dealing, division, enmity, finding fault, criticizing? We've had enough of that, I think. And it's not making our world better. And it does not provide a future for our children. What we need is more love, more kindness, more gentleness, more generosity. We need more courage. Yes, we need schemes and plans and smart people and productive people, absolutely. But if any of that is without heart and without love, it will be useless. It will be counterproductive. What we need is love. Forgive me sounding like a 60s or 70s pop song, but that's what we need. We need more love. We need more people with heart. We need more young people like Mary with the generosity to say yes to a kind of improbable future, to make her heart, her mind and her body available to the future for, that is good for other people, and not just about myself. So I beg you, we need it. If there's going to be a future, we need to change the way that we're doing things. Pope Francis ends with a quote, and I'm going to quote him because he's definitely smarter and holier than I will ever be. And it's a prayer to Mary. And I thought at the beginning of this year we would pray to our mother and ask her to look after us, to give birth to hope within us, and bring us unity. A woman of salvation to you we entrust this year. Keep it, keep us, keep our world in your heart. Let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ our light has dawned upon the world in joyful hope, then let us confidently make known our needs. <clears throat> and our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For our church, that we might continue the work of bringing the practical benefits of the good news to the very ends of the earth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world, that all peoples might find the way of peace together, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that the dignity and rights of all be upheld in all areas of society, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and homeless, that we might find better ways to address their needs, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing despair and pain, may they discover the peace and healing of 
the shepherd of Israel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, and the homebound, especially Olivia Weatherford, Francis Cagle, Patrick Turner, Francis Gussman, Bob and Suzanne Molman, Olivia Zikinolfi, Nello McDaniel, Shelley Conger, and Joseph Micheri. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Lynn Montgomery de Frenza, Mariuccia Musili, and Lucia Piro. May they know the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Linda Douglas and Barbara Slattery, as I mentioned, battling COVID from the parish, we pray for their intentions. Ever-present God, renew our faith, hope, and love in your call to live life to the full. May we accompany our sisters and brothers into a new year of justice and peace for all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is 
sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Go look with favor Lord we pray on these gifts of your church in which are offered now not gold or frankincense and myrrh but he who by them is proclaimed sacrificed and received Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so of angels and thrones and saints, we sing the hymn of God without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Nicholas our Bishop, all the clergy, all who serve your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Boniface, St. Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With the Spirit and the words that Jesus gave us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let's um, do the two sides first, and then let's do this next, and then that one, huh? Is that okay?
us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, I've got to do one more thing. So have any of the kids, Neil, them, do you want to come, want to come up, keep the masks on, keep six feet apart, come up here and we'll say how Mary married to the last
So, um, Father Anthony will be on tonight. Father Anthony will be on tonight. And then I did 